Welcome back to the pig review guys or welcome to the pig room if you are new here. If you are new here, go ahead and subscribe. Come on, if you love guinea pigs, this is all that we do here. We are going to have a super fun time today because we are going to be doing what I call, call, I sound very Jersey right there, what I call a piggy makeover. I am going to be giving my pigs a lot of DIY grooming because some of my piggies are not looking the best. They need some baths, they need some ear cleanings, they need some boar cleanings. I get a lot of questions from you guys over on my Instagram about how to go about giving your guinea pigs baths, whether or not you can actually bathe the guinea pig, and all things in between that are health related. And I just wanted to make a dedicated video for you guys, giving you guys the full rundown as far as what I do for my own pigs. Now, I must say before we do jump into this by no means I am not a vet or an expert I have been doing you know research and have had animals guinea pigs for that matter for the last year and I have definitely you know involved myself with things that work really well I've nursed my pigs back to health in certain ways and um, just daily maintenance with shampoos ointments and other supplies and I want to give you guys a rundown as far as what I use so you can go ahead and see what will work for you. So for this video I'm going to be grabbing four candidates from the pig room. We are going to be doing actually four different types of breeds so you guys can kind of see what they look like, see what kind of care they involve because it is kind of a, a wide range of care for each breed of guinea pig. I don't have very many breeds, I only have four different kinds so for the purpose I want to show you guys, but we're going to be working on Ollie, who is a Baldwin pig, Jojo, who is a Teddy guinea pig, Toby, who is an American guinea pig, and Lennon, who is an Abyssinian. So all kinds of different breeds, you guys will see them and how it goes down in regards to getting them squeaky clean. So if you guys enjoy videos like this, make sure to leave a like before we jump into this video and let's begin. So I have done a couple videos on my channel regarding, you know, piggy makeovers, baths, health checks, and all that kind of stuff, but this is a nice dedicated video for you guys to get the full rundown as far as how it goes down and the products you need. So let's talk about what you need for this to properly work. Shampoo. Shampoo is the number one thing that you probably need when it comes to obviously bathing a guinea pig. This has actually been highly recommended by the LA Guinea Pig Rescue. I'll actually leave their channel linked down below so you guys can go ahead and check them out. They have covered from topics of health checks to uh, really, really sick guinea pigs and everything in between. So you guys can get the rundown on their channel about everything guinea pig related. I don't really ever make super dedicated videos when it comes to, you know, topics of guinea pigs, but for a change, I'm trying it out. So I hope you guys enjoy this. So let's talk about products. Products are the number one important thing when it comes to taking care of your guinea pigs because it shouldn't be shocking you know some products are dangerous for guinea pigs and you want to make sure that you're giving them the right stuff so I actually go ahead and shampoo them with Myconazole shampoo by the brand Davis this is one of the best shampoos you could possibly use and also one of the safest it is actually marketed towards dogs and cats but completely safe for guinea pigs now this is technically a anti-fungus shampoo so you would typically use this if your guinea pig is suffering from ringworm or any type of fungal infections um, but it is completely safe to use even if they don't have any of those situations going on it doesn't hurt to use it on them if they don't have anything happening I have this link down below on my Amazon so you guys can go ahead and purchase this um, I believe it's about 17 to 20 dollars so fairly expensive but it is more of a medical shampoo you can use unscented baby shampoo as well I have heard of people using uh, head and shoulders which is something I don't really advocate for I definitely think it's filled with a lot more chemicals so I like to keep things as simple as possible so I would say myconazole shampoo or baby unscented shampoo. Make sure it is unscented because you don't want any scents on your guinea pigs. So when it comes to a pig like Toby, uh, he has white fur for the most part. He gets very dirty grease glands, very, very dirty. You guys will see it soon. It gets very brown and gross. So I have a toothbrush right here. So that way when I lather them up, you know, work my hands in, this is going to do a really great job at actually scrubbing that grease gland to make sure it's all off. And then we also have a comb to kind of just comb through their fur just to make sure, you know, everything is out there. They don't have any scabs, dandruff, all that kinds of stuff. So that is pretty pretty much it for the bath part. It's pretty self-explanatory. Once we get going towards the bath, I will show you guys, you know, water temperature, how we actually set up the bath itself. And then moving on to health checks, I have got my cotton pads right here, Q-tips for bore cleanings and ear cleanings. And then we have an eye lube right here by Opticare. And this is for Ollie, um, and only Ollie, because he actually doesn't produce enough tears. So his eyes are fairly dry and his body actually tries to overproduce tears and actually ends up getting really crusty and very squinty. So this helps out with the little man's eye and then Gloves. Gloves are the most important part of this because bore cleanings get very gross and stinky and 
sometimes slimy, which is very disgusting. So keeping your hands clean and cleaning multiple pigs at the same time and in between, you don't wanna be sharing and cross-contaminating germs with each pig, so this will help with that. And then also, coconut oil, which I am forgetting, which is upstairs. Usually I have some in my spice cabinet, um, but that is actually going to lubricate them, get everything out of their pockets, and get them very clean. So that is pretty much the foundation of Piggy Spa Day covered. You guys will get the full rundown when we're actually beginning the whole process, um, but I'm gonna stop rambling and let's get started. Alrighty, everyone. So we have got Ollie here, who has already left us a nice surprise, <laughs> but we are going to be giving Ollie a nice little makeover. I actually already bathed him about three or four days ago, so he doesn't need an oil bath, but just for the sake of showing you guys, here I have some organic virgin coconut oil. This is what I use to actually clean him up and get all the dirt and debris off of his skin. He does actually have a little bit of crustiness on his other eye right there, as you guys can see. And again, this is just from him overproducing tears and getting lots of crustiness and also digging his head in some hay. So we're going to be removing that and then also giving him his eye lube. So for the most part, he will be relatively simple in regards to his little spa day, but just for the purpose of showing you guys what my process is for a Baldwin pig. I thought it was really good to show you guys. So let's begin. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually open up this coconut oil right here. It is a little warmer in my house, so this should be relatively melted. I have some lettuce for him, which I'm sure he's going to devour in 2.2 seconds. So I just got my Q-tip right here. I'm going to dunk it into some of this coconut oil. Not too much, just enough to really lubricate and coat up the tip of the Q-tip. And then we're just going to slowly work our way into getting off all of those crusties and making sure to avoid obviously his eye area. You never want anything to go in there that's not supposed to. And Ollie for the most part is, you know, very well behaved. So out of all my pigs, he tends to be one of the easiest ones that I can actually, you know, work with. And having that lettuce too really, really, really helps. <laughs> so I'm actually just gonna grab some on my finger and actually lightly massage around his eye. So that way I can actually you know, warm it up on his skin. I also find the easiest way to really make this process easier for uh, an owner of a pig, guinea pig is to have them on a table that's kind of at hip level and also being able to like push their body and their back end up against you. That way it's harder for them to run away and also like you got more support and foundation to like control them. Now these crusties are very stuck to his eye. So it does take a little bit of elbow grease to really get it off of him. I'm not forcing it off. I'm just, you know, continuing to massage it so that way it doesn't hurt him. Just because it is attached to his skin and I don't wanna, you know, hurt him. He is a very sensitive pig to all kinds of things uh, just because he does not have any hair. So it's really important that you are gentle with this breed. And then once your Q-tip gets a little dirty, you can just go ahead and switch to a new one. So again, we'll just lather that up in some coconut oil and don't be afraid to again, use your hands. Whatever process works for you, I say go for it. You guys can kind of see that he has some little bits and pieces of debris uh, right around his nose area. I got off as much as I possibly could, but for the rest of it, I'm just going to actually get a warm cloth and just go ahead and wipe it off. You don't have to get everything as long as you get, you know, a majority of it, that's totally fine. And sometimes it takes a process and, you know, maybe a day or two to get things loosened up. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get a wet cloth and that should do the job. do a little bit of his grease glen as well. So I'll show you guys that process. Just put this down right here. Turn him around so you guys can see properly. So here is his grease glen. As you can see, it's not too bad, but we're just going to see if we can get off a little bit of that grease. I can imagine sometimes for the pigs, this actually feels good, uh, especially for his case, because Baldwin pigs are a little bit more prone to getting dry skin. So having just a lot of moisture is really, really good for them, especially during the colder months. Here in Jersey, it is getting colder, like very quickly. So we are right around the corner from winter. So during this time, it's really important that you wanna make sure that Baldwin pigs, skinny pigs, whatever pig you may have that has no fur um, is well moisturized. So I'll just go ahead and grab a cotton pad and then just, <laughs> these little purrs are so cute. Go ahead and just take off 
as much grease as I possibly can. And as you guys can see right there, a little bit came off, which is really, really good. Beautiful buddy. And I'll just go ahead and check his ears. Everything is good there. Very good. We are almost done, buddy. Alrighty, now comes time to do one of the best parts, and that is bore cleaning. He gave me a very hard time last time, so hopefully he's well behaved on camera. So I'm just going to tuck this up. This is my favorite method. So my chest is right, or my chest, my belly is right here. I fold this up, so this way it has, you know, it's less thick and then more thick because I'm actually going to prop him up and have his butt right here. So there we have him right there. Just going to lubricate that area a little bit with some coconut oil. He does also have some crusties right on his belly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that as well. It's so important to clean Baldwin and skinny pigs pretty often just because they do get so dirty, as you can see. And they are one of those breeds where you definitely have to do a lot more work with them. So make sure you, you know, do research before you get involved with, you know, particular breeds because some do involve a lot more work and it's important to know that because some involve a lot more time to be spent with them. And this is something that must be done to keep them healthy. All right, so I'm just going to put him like this. Just clean around his genital area. Now they are gonna wanna squirm and I just got a whiff of the smell. It does not smell good. So be prepared for that. Don't be afraid to wear a mask. Just get some more on a Q-tip right here. And we'll go back to, again, cleaning him. So I'll just go right into that pocket and just get any gunk that's in there. This does not hurt the piggy. It's as if someone was cleaning your ear. Uh, the reason why they squirm is just because they're uncomfortable. And then I'll just make sure that he doesn't have any smegma on his pee pee. All right, so it doesn't smell good. <laughs> I keep getting whiffs of it, which is to be expected, uh, but you never really get used to that smell at all. Alrighty, so that is Ali Spa Day, nice and complete, looking so much better. Again, he didn't need that much, but just doing that little bit completely changes not only the way he looks, but also his attitude. Feels better, looks better, way healthier. I'm gonna go ahead and just clean this up, make sure everything is nice and clean for the next piggy and we'll grab the next one. So we've got our next candidate right here, which is Toby. He is going to be getting a bum bath, bore cleaning, nail trimming, and possible ear cleaning. So just wanted to show you guys how I go ahead and set up the sink before we begin. Fairly simple, because I do have a rather large sink, which is actually good so they can't jump out as often. Not saying it doesn't happen, it still does. This definitely makes my job a lot easier. I line the sink with some bath towel. This helps to give them some traction so they're not slipping and sliding and running around. Just makes them stay in like one spot a lot easier. So I just go ahead and lay down a towel, put the piggy in there, then I'll just run the water off to the side, let it warm up to about you know room temperature to lukewarm. So he's really just gonna be getting a bath on his backside. As you guys can see, it is very, very dirty. This is the reality of having a white guinea pig. You're gonna have to give them quite often some bum baths, but it's fairly simple. So we're mainly just gonna be focusing on the bum area and making sure that's nice and scrubbed and good. And then we'll work to about stopping right before his ears and we should be good to go. Alrighty, buddy. Are you ready for your bath? So Toby's gonna be a little bit timid in the beginning because he's not really understanding what's going on which is normal. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the right temperature of water, just making sure it's off to the side uh, so it doesn't, you know, get him burnt or anything like that or just make him too cold. And as you can see, he's wanting to get out, which is very normal. <laughs> he's really wanting to get out. All right, so the water temperature feels nice and good. So as you guys can see, what's really nice about having the towel down here is that it kind of blocks a drain and it creates kind of like a shallow pool which is really nice for soaking. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just wet his bottom nice and gently. Ooh, and he's going to wanna do that, of course. That is normal. So just have a nice firm grip on them so they can't do that. No matter how many baths that I've given, honestly, to my own guinea pigs, it seems like it never gets easy. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cup some water using my hands onto his body. You know, this process is less stressful on him just because he doesn't have the sound of the running water, which can be a little bit, you know, scary to them. And then we will go ahead and get our shampoo. Again, our Myconazole shampoo. And I will just go ahead and place a little bit of that on my hands. And I'm just gonna mainly focus on his butt. There we go. 
I know, bud. I know. <laughs> Seems like he's enjoying it now. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit more shampoo on him. to our towel side. So for this part, I just like to make sure I get him as dry as possible with the towel, and then we'll work our way to moving on to the blow dryer. I know, you're gonna be very clean. Are you clean yourself? Good boy. You look so much better, buddy. You do. Yes, you do. And this grease gland looks so much better. Yeah, so you look like a pure white pig now. It's just what we wanted. You being crazy? Can you guys tell that he's a pig that doesn't like to be touched? <laughs> oh, I think I know what you want. I think you want some veggies. Is that what you want? Do you want some of this? Mmm. Oh, yummy. That's what you wanted, buddy. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and move on to our blow dryer. Alrighty, nails are trimmed and looking much better. Let's go ahead and put on our gloves to get ready. Well, actually I'll do one glove on my right hand because that's mainly what I use for our bore cleaning. I know, are you uh, stunned right now? Are you mad at me? Probably, <laughs> it's a lot. The number one way to like gain your pig's <laughs> love back after this kind of stuff is food. Lettuce, treats, anything you possibly can, just food because they hold grudges, they really do, but food is the number one way to their heart. So let's go ahead and just prop him up so I can see his sack really quickly. Yeah, it needs a little bit of cleaning, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just get a little bit of coconut oil. Put that right on there. Yep, penis looks good. And as you guys can see, just grossness on the Q-tip, ugh. You are all done, buddy. I will let you bring this piece of lettuce back to your cave because you were such a good boy. Everything looked really, really good on him. The hind looks so much better. Like he looks, his coloring again, not black. Uh, let's go put it back and grab the next pig. Alrighty, next we have my beautiful girl, Lennon right here. She is my very fluffy Abyssinian. A little old lady. I don't know her exact age because she was rescued, but from what I can tell, she seems a little bit older. She's got this like really <laughs> cute wispy fur that grows only right here, which looks really, really funny, but she is adorable and also the sweetest little girl ever. So she's only going to need a little bum bath. Before we do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and give her an overall health check and make sure everything is fine. So let's go ahead and just clean out her ears and see if there's any gunk inside of them. <laughs> I know, doesn't that feel funny, Missy? We do have a little bit of gunkiness. Also some crusties, which I'm just getting out right now. Alrighty, so ears look nice and good. So we are going to go ahead and move on to our nail trimming and see if she needs some, which she definitely does. So I'm gonna have to actually pick her up because that's the easiest way that I know I can do it. There we go, there's one. 
I know, it's not the best, but we gotta get it done, Missy. You'll feel much better, I promise. There we go. All right, that's the front paws done. We'll give her a nice little break before we move on to the back ones that are munched down on some lettuce. All righty, let's move on to your back nails, Missy. No. go all done very good so as you guys can see she's got tons of urine stained fur so that's got to get washed i'm going to let her munch down on this lettuce while i warm up the water and then we will begin her bath Baths really aren't one of those things that you should be doing that often for guinea pigs. I say do it when necessary. So if your guinea pig is really stinky, smelly, their fur just does not look great and greasy and they're just dirty, then you definitely would want to, oh, <laughs> why would you do that, bud? You almost fell off the table. Then you would definitely want to go ahead and give them a bath. Yeah, you don't want to be bathing them too often because again, it can irritate them. Too many baths is not that good. Alrighty, bud. So you are all good, combing wise. Go ahead and check out your nails and see how they are doing. Yeah, we need a slight trim. All right, so let's go ahead and cut his nails. Good boy. Are you ready for your bath, mister? It's okay. I know, I know. Shh, it's okay. It's okay. I know, shh. Yes, that's a good boy. You're being very good. You're gonna feel good. You're first gonna feel like a new coat, I promise. I must say it feels really interesting to be bathing him just because, you know, teddy guinea pigs have very unique feeling fur. So bathing him just feels like even cooler. Um, and I am feeling that like there's stray hairs, look at all that coming off. So this is really, really great for his coat. Gonna help him feel even lighter and fresher, just like he walked out of the salon. And I'm not trying to keep the shampoo on for too long, just because I don't want it to dry out his skin too much. So I'm just giving a nice little lather and scrub and then we'll rinse it off straight away. He is being really well behaved, which is nice. Minus a few jump outs in the beginning, but he's doing very good.
Jojo looks so much better and so floofy. Like I didn't think he can get even more floofy, but he's right in front of me and I'm like, oh my God, you like looked <laughs> double the size. Looks so freaking cute. All the other pigs look really good as well. So I'm really glad I got around to doing a little spa day for some of the piggies. I do have to do spa days for the rest, but I'm gonna obviously do that off camera because filming 17 piggies spa days would be a long video, very, very long. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you guys do have any questions about any of the products that I used or maybe some things that I missed, leave them down below. Want some more lettuce? There you go. Um, I'm gonna go before he finishes this because he's gonna run away. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And until then, I hope you and your piggies are happy, safe, and healthy. Bye guys. Thank you.